Hello YouTube and welcome to Bubble Hearthing. This is going to be my Boomsday Project review of the Hunter Class cards. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. First we have a one mana secret plan. It's a spell. Discover a secret. Pretty nice there. Um, most notably, it can be put into spell Hunter, which is nice. Or even just some kind of whatever Hunter, really. I think many Hunters can kind of splash this in their deck. What are they going to take out for it? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe they're just going to throw it to the wayside and say no thank you. But, <clears throat> excuse me. In decks that are running the Spellstone, therefore they're running a decent number of secrets, maybe they take out some of the secrets that are more situational. Um, Wandering Monster is definitely a staple secret in Hunter if you're going to run the Spellstone. It's a very solid card. However, Explosive Trap, well, if your opponent's a control or a combo deck, then it's not really going to do a whole lot, is it? And Freezing Trap, well, if they're an aggro deck, maybe you just bounce a 1-1 one, one, and they just play out the rest of their minions. So those are the two that I could see. Maybe you run one each of those and two secret plans. That way you can kind of tech it towards what your opponent is playing. So if you can tell, okay, it's an aggro, maybe it's an even pally, or an odd pally for that matter, or maybe it's an even shaman, or whatever new deck, maybe it's a Treant deck that's coming out here. Go for that explosive trap, get that two damage and everything, clear their board. If it's more of a control game, then sure, go for the freezing trap, or just take a wandering monster. If you have extra wandering monsters, it's not bad. I like this card, I think it's going to see some play. Next up, okay, Bomb Toss. Now some people don't like this card. I really like this card. This is like one of my favorite cards for the set. And I love the Goblin Bombs, as long as you don't put the card in your deck. You can generate Goblin Bombs, and that's fantastic. Do not put the Goblin Bomb card in your deck. That is the wrong way to do it. So let's just go over what the card does now. It's a 2 mana, deal 2 damage, summon a 0-2 Goblin Bomb. I don't have it on here, but what the Goblin Bombs are, obviously they're 0-2, they're mechs, and when they have a Death Rattle, deal 2 damage to the enemy hero? Yeah, hero. It just goes directly face. There's no variability like it was with the Boom Bots. Notably, this says deal 2 damage. doesn't say deal 2 damage to a minion. So, if it said deal 2, deal two damage to a minion, I would very much so not be too happy to see this card. But because you can do that, it's like 2 mana, a delayed deal 4. You can do it to your opponent's face, get a Goblin Bomb out there, and use that to combo off other things. You're always going to have a target for Bomb Toss. I think that's a fantastic card, and I like it. I don't know if Mech Hunter exactly is going to be fantastic. I really don't think so. But I think Goblin Bomb Hunter could be a real thing. I'm definitely going to make like a Goblin Bomb Hunter deck, and it's going to be so much fun to play. Even if it's not a great deck, it's going to be a lot of fun, I promise. All right. Next up, we have the 2-mana Venomizer. It's a 2-2 mech with Magnetic and Poisonous. Now, there was something that I didn't realize when I was doing my live stream of this review, which, unfortunately, I didn't format it very well, so I'm doing uh, not a stream of this in order to have proper formatting for YouTube. Um, there is the mech further down the way that deals 1 damage to all characters at the end of the turn. This has Magnetic. I believe that one also has Magnetic. So either one you play, you can get the whole poisonous clear every board clear. You can get a board clear. That's what I'm trying to say here. Um, if you remember back to when we had the arena, where you would get two different classes, and many, many, many people <laughs> specifically tried again and again to get warlock and rogue, so they could use the plague doctor, I believe it's called, or it's like combo give a target minion poisonous, and the oh, despicable dreadlord. <laughs> to deal one damage to all enemy creatures, and it would just wipe the board every turn. What do you play? Okay, it's dead. What do you play? It's dead again. So aside from that very specific thing, I do not like this card. Does that mean that I like this card all of a sudden? Well, the other one costs a pretty hefty amount, but it does what it needs to. It's basically an 8 mana board clear if you combo this two, and I think that's the only place where you're really going to see this having a lot of value. Maybe if you discover this mech somehow, then okay, I could see it being good. Just has a little discover thing, tack it onto something cool. But on its own, 2-2 poisonous is bad. Um, the There was the spider, I think it's a 5 mana 1-3 perhaps? Um, maybe not exactly. That had poisonous and rush. And that didn't see any play at all. This doesn't even have rush. You can give it rush, but that thing is too much work. Without further ado, I'm going to keep on going. I don't like this card. 2 mana cyber tech chip. Give your minions death rattle at a random mech to your hand. So what are we going to do with the Cybertech chip? Well, the first comparison we have to this is Infest. It is one mana cheaper, but Infest saw absolutely no competitive play whatsoever. It wasn't even really all that fun to play. I mean, you could 
just keep playing beasts, but the beasts didn't necessarily synergize with each other, it wasn't very good. I think Cybertech Chip is also going to be not very good and not see any competitive play at all. I don't think the value of mechs individually and randomly is going to be enough to make this card better than Infest, which was already bad. Moving on. Two mana fireworks tech. You can tell how I kind of, you know, cheered up a little bit that I like this card. It is a 2-1 minion with battle cry. Give a friendly mech plus one plus one. If it has death rattle, trigger it. And if this is triggering you that I keep moving my hands around, I'm sorry. I can keep them down here, but that's just not really... I like to move my hands a little bit and do things. Anywho. So this card. This is going into the Goblin Bomb deck without a doubt. Because you're triggering the death rattle. There's already a lot of whole death rattle um, hunter... Of course, this has to specifically be a mech, so it's not as um, as applicable as like Terror Scale Stalker, which just says target any trigger any minions death rattle on any friendly minions death rattle. But the fact that you can give your Goblin Bomb in particular or any other mech you really want to plus one plus one and trigger the death rattle means you're gonna get an extra death rattle off the Goblin Bomb or potentially a Spider Bomb, which is the only other thing I could see maybe playing in that deck. Even then, I don't really think it has uh, too much synergy with it. And then you give it the plus, you give it the one, so it can actually attack and then die. And if you have to play a two mana two one, those aren't really bad stats for the body. If it was a two mana two two, it would be very very good. If it was a two mana three one, it would also be super good. So I think they had to make a two one to keep it sort of in check. But I think the effect is very nice, and definitely gonna put this in the Goblin Bomb deck. Talking of bombs, I don't know. Are we talking about bombs? Kind of. I mentioned this in the previous one though. Spider Bomb is a three mana two two mech. It has Magnetic and Death Rattle, destroy a random enemy minion. Wow, so Magnetic... I don't really know if you want to Magnetic this thing. Um, you could essentially rush the Death Rattle out there if you put it on a weak mech, but you're also giving it plus two plus two, but you want it to die to get the Death Rattle to go off, so not a huge fan of that interaction. However, you can use this along with, like we said just before, the Fireworks tech to trigger the Death Rattle, kill a random enemy minion, and then it has a little buff on it, maybe you just run into something. So you trigger the death rattle, you kill an enemy minion. It gets plus one plus one. Maybe you use that to kill a X3 minion, you know, a 4-3 could be there, 3-3. Three, three. That's nice. So you kill that minion, and then it dies, and you kill another random enemy minion. So that's like three minions dead for two cards. Three for two is pretty good value. In that case, that you get that to work out. Maybe not, you're obviously not always going to be able to, but this is a pretty good card. The only downside here, this is Control Hunter. This isn't really Mech Hunter. If there is a Mech Hunter deck, this is probably going to run it because it's probably going to be based more around control. Keep in mind, Mech Hunter and Goblin Bomb Hunter are two separate. They might have a few overlapping cards, of course, but they're def definitely two distinct decks. Um, so Spider Bomb goes in the Control Hunter and the Mech Hunter. Not definitely, <laughs> not specifically in the Goblin Bomb deck. I don't want to say definitely not in that. Well, it could be in Goblin Bomb deck, but I don't think that it's an auto-include. Ah, that's how I want to put it. That being said, I think this is a very nice card design. I like it very much. Um, and that's probably going to see some play. I think so. Next up, Goblin Prank. Now, how do we figure this one? It's a two mana. Give a friendly minion plus three plus three in rush. That alone is nice. It dies at the end of the turn. That, not so nice. So how do we compare this? Well, we can compare this to, uh, oh jeez, what's it called, you know? <laughs> Power Overwhelming, there we go, I forgot it because it's been in the Hall of Fame, I haven't played it, I haven't seen it played in a very long time. <laughs> so, Power Overwhelming is the one mana Warlock spell, where give a minion plus four plus four dies at the end of the turn. Doesn't give it charge, or in this case rush, um, but it does die. So you're paying one extra mana to give something plus three plus three. Now, it's noteworthy that, of course, Power of Roaming is in the Hall of Fame because it was considered, well, cr unfair, unfit to be in the game to maintain balance. It was considered very unbalanced. So, let's see, 2 mana plus 3 plus 3. Would you play a card that said give a minion, you know, plus 3 plus 3? Oh, yes, you would. And Rush? Rush, I'm not really too crazy about that keyword. You can get it to work with maybe the Spider Bomb and the Goblin Bomb. It's kind of nice. Although, you're missing out on a lot of the damage. What I want to say, and obviously you want to put this on a um, minion that has a death rattle, or this is going to be a desperation thing, I have to kill my opponent's big minion, otherwise I'm going to die, which is a situation you really don't want to be put into. However, what if it doesn't matter with the rush? What if the minion's already been on the board for a turn and survived? Now his two mana gives something plus three plus three, and then it dies. That's pretty good, because now you can go face. It's not hindered by the whole rush 
not being charged thing. It's basically going face, two mana deal three damage. Would someone run that? I think someone would probably run that. I think that's actually Frostbolt. <laughs> Granted, Frostbolt also freezes things, but yes. So, that being said, do I like this card? I do like this card. The fact that it can target any minion and give it rush and it just happens to die at the end of the turn, you can turn that into an upside. I like it. And next up here, well, let's just go back to this for a second. I know I'm kind of harping on things. I don't think that the power to this is going to necessarily be understood immediately. I think this might be like a sleeper card. But give it maybe a week or two after the set's been released, and then maybe people will see, oh, you know what, this, actually, this card actually wrecked me a couple times, so maybe this card's got something to it. All right, now, a card that I don't think will happen is the five mana Necro Mechanic. It's a three six minion. Your death battle is triggered twice. Well, this is very, very similar to, of course, Baron Rivendare, which saw a little bit of play. Um, it was cheaper at four mana, and it was a 1-7 body, which was statted even further for um, survivability. This 3-6, I get it for the Hunter, you want to do a little more damage. Uh, and the 6 health is still kind of statted to survive, but it has less health than Baron Rivendare, and it's played at a higher mana cost, which means that it's more likely to die before your effect goes off. This also reminds me of Houndmaster Shaw, how you want to keep it on the board for a bit and then protect it and maybe I didn't think that card saw a whole lot of play. I didn't think that card. I don't think that card saw a whole lot of play. Words. I can use them. Um, this has no tribe to it either. This is not a mech, this is not a beast, this is not a dragon. Just, despite the fact that you see a mechanical beast in here. Yes, I know we're talking about the mechanic, but still, there's a mechanical beast. It should be at least a beast or a mech, maybe, I don't know. Um, so, I don't think this card is going to be very good. Despite the fact that I'm talking up the Goblin Bomb a whole lot, because, yeah, I don't think this is going to be the card that makes that deck work. I don't think this is going to be the card that makes any deck work. The rare case, you get this in Fluke and the Boom Zooka, which we're going to go over at the end, and you get your Death Battles to go off twice, but it's so random. I hate that card, too. Spoiler alert, I don't like that card. I don't like this card. And I don't like this card, either. What? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And how much I talked about Goblin Bombs. This is a 7-mana 5-5 which is the main reason why it's bad. Boom Master Flark. Battle Cry summon four Goblin Bombs. They're zero twos. Wow, I mean, I could... So the only time I could see this actually being relevant is in Wild and a Feign Death <laughs> deck, and one where you can actually run that and just trigger all your, all your death rattles. Okay, that's a legitimate case. Outside of that case, though, you don't want to fill your board with all these things. Yeah, you can magnetize them, but there's four targets to magnetize, your opponent could wipe the board, and that's probably better for you if they do, honestly, because you're trying to get the damage out there anyway. Can you afford to play a 7-mana 5-5? No. No, I don't believe that you can in Hunter. I don't think it's worth it. Not that you're going to die immediately, but you're going to lose so much tempo from this play, and Hunter is a very much, you know, hit the face, keep up the tempo, keep up the pressure. You're relieving a lot of pressure when you play this card. You're going to follow up a Savannah Jaime with this thing? No. I don't like it. I think it's just too slow. And, well, what did Flark make? Well, you got a Boom Zooka here. Eight mana, obviously, Hunter, Legendary Spell. Summon three minions from your deck. They attack enemy minions, then die. It's noted that they attack enemy minions randomly. So you don't get to charge the targets. So you have little minions and big minions in your deck. Well, hopefully your big minions hit their big guys, or their little guys. Hopefully your little guys trade well, or they're just going to run into things and die. You're going to thin your deck three cards, I guess. <clears throat> I'm gonna have my voice crack right now, I guess. Wow. Puberty sucks, doesn't it? I went through that, like, a while ago, and now it's coming back with a vengeance. <laughs> no, but... Anywho. This doesn't really seem very good at all. The fact that you're getting random minions from your deck also... you Sure, you can try to gear this towards death rattle minions, so that they trade, and then they get their effect. Even if they don't manage to, you know, trade with something, you still get the death rattle. Kind of mitigates the downside to it. But on 8 mana, do you really want to play something that's board control? I don't even think Control Hunter is going to play this card. Thought I heard something. If anyone sees something back there, then let me know. Not that I'm streaming right now, but let me know. So, yeah, I don't see this card seeing, jeez, any play at all. Nasty. And that, I believe, is the end of the Hunter class card reveal for the Boomsday Project. Thank you very much for uh, sticking with me. Next up, I believe we have the Mage. So... Please uh, feel free to watch that video if you're interested. If not, <laughs> good night, or have a good day, and good luck.